Hey guys, today I'm going to show you step by step how to install an Antec Cooler 620. The process is the same for the same models by Corsair, Thermaltake, uh, Cooler Master makes one. They're just a rebranded of the Asetec liquid all-in-one liquid cooler. So I'm going to show you step by step how to put this thing in. And let's get to it. Alright guys, what we've got laying here is this big mess. You've got your fan screws, your case screws to attach the, the radiator to the back of the case. You've got your AMD brackets, your Intel brackets, and your retention ring, as well as all your little adapters, your screw downs, and these little things. Now the instructions don't do a very good job of explaining exactly how to hook up some of this stuff. That's why we're going to spend a little time with it. Today we're going to be putting it on an AMD, uh, just a 6100, in my little brother's build. So, we're going to remove all the parts we don't need. We don't need the 2011 adapters. Throw those over there. And we don't need the Intel brackets because we're using an AMD chip. So let's get those out of the way. Simplify it down a little. Alright, so here's what you got. You got your rear bracket. Now, you have to put these little adapters in to screw the screw downs onto. So all you do with these is you put them on the back and you just push them in. That's it. They're that simple. And that's the bottom. It's ready to go. The only thing left to do is peel off the double-sided adhesive and place it on the back of the motherboard. The next tricky part is the retention ring for the actual water block itself. That's where these little boogers come in and that's where the instructions get a little tricky because what you do is real close on here I don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's actually written in the same cut it's stamped in there what socket they go for but essentially all you're gonna do is take it and place it this side down and you're gonna take the top part and it just simply clips right in there just like that and you repeat the process for the other three and there they all are installed in the retention bracket. Now you want to take your retention bracket and actually put it on the water block. And I've seen other videos of people using this without the retention ring and I don't like that. So we're going to show you how to use the retention ring so that it makes life a lot easier for you. We'll take your, got your cooler, got your water block here. It's all cleaned off and good. You want to take your retention bracket and you want to turn it upside down and you want to set it through the little grooves, you want to turn it and hang it. You can hang it right there and then take this retention ring and clip it right in there. The little bit of persuasion. Alright, now that you've got that installed, it won't fall off and that's what you really want it to do. You want it to hold still. Then you'll take your screw downs that's what I'm calling them. I don't know what the manual calls them, but you want to slip them through just like that. And you want to go through each one. And that whole part is now completely assembled. All right. Now the next step is to remove the stock cooler and the stock clip so that you can apply the bracket for the liquid cooler. Alright, now we've got the case laying on its side and this is the part where we're going to remove the, the stock CPU cooler and you remove it, just go ahead and unplug it. In there tight. Unclip it. Real simple. And you just pull the bugger right out. And it's done. Now that noisy little bugger is gone. We're going to go ahead and use our little anti-static cloth here, and we're going to clean off this goop that was on it. Oh my goodness, it was covered in it. You really don't want to put your fingers all over it because that's going to transfer, or that's going to leave oil residue on it, which will create hot spots on the CPU. And they already get warm enough as it is, so you don't want to add to it. Use a little alcohol rubbing alcohol 90% to go across it 
and wipe it clean. Set that to the side. All right, now what you're going to do is you want to remove these four screws. And the one reason you want to lay it on the side is because the back of your case typically has a cutout for the rip, so you can change this out. And if you lay it on a table, when you let these screws go, the back plate will just drop, and then you can lift the case and remove the back plate easily. So we're going to go ahead and remove these, and I'm going to use a bigger screwdriver. And take the screws out and you just pull it right out. Nothing to it. Alright, that little clunk was the back plate falling. Set that to the side and and you pull the back plate right out from under it. And then you set it to the side because you're not going to need it anymore. I highly recommend taking it and reattaching the bracket to it just so that you know where it's at. Put it in your motherboard box, put it in some box, put it in a drawer, I don't know, put it in a Ziploc bag. But just so that you keep it because they're not expensive, but you don't want to have to buy another one one day if you resell it. All right, while we've got this pulled apart, one thing I want to do is because we're going to install this one in a push-pull configuration with, so that the red LED fan stays on the inside and can light up the case. It only comes with four fan screws. It comes with four case screws for the radiator, but we're not going to use that. So how do you retain two fans on there with four screws? Well, it's actually really simple. All you're going to do is take one screw in one corner and one screw in another corner on both sides of the radiator. And it actually works just fine. So some people will freak out, but it'll be okay, I promise. Well, before we get going too far in here, we want to go ahead and apply the rear back plate. And with the adhesive, you can stick it back there and kind of forget about it until you need it. So we're going to go ahead and lift the case up and we're going to slide it right into place and we're going to push against it kind of firmly to get the double adhesive to stick real good and now that that's there we can go ahead and drop it down let's go ahead and drop this fan out real quick alright guys so we pulled this loose and we're going to just kind of lay it here to the side for now not touching the CPU so it's kind of hovering here then we're going to take the radiator now we've got the unit ready to go in the computer. We're going to take this part and we're going to kind of lay it over here to the side for now. Set our radiator there. We want to take our exhaust fan and get it into place. Now here's a trick to get these fans into place. You can go ahead and since you're only going to use two of the fan screws to mount it to the radiator, go ahead and use two of the typical fan screws to hold the fan into place so that you're not holding the fan and holding the radiator at the same time. I promise you this will make your life easier if you do this. Alright, now we've got the rear fan mounted and we're ready for the radiator. So what we're going to do is take our two screws and we're going to slip them right through. See them poke out right here. And it sticks through at the bottom so we've got plenty to grab onto. Now that we're going to mount the radiator in here because of the way the fans are in this case, we're going to have to mount the hoses on the bottom. So we're going to get them lined up in here. And just a slight turn on that screw gets it lined up and gets it caught. Same thing on the bottom. I'm going to take a small screwdriver and we're going to go ahead and connect it. We're not going to over tighten it because we're not trying to break anything. So there, the rear of the radiator is mounted. Now we're going to take the red fan that we had in here and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the back one. We're just going to slip a screw through here, line it up with our screw holes. That one's on there. Reach off in here and get the other one. I'm trying to stay out of the picture so you guys can see what's going on inside. You got that mounted. Alright, now our fans are mounted. Now, if you want to go down to the hardware store, you can get these. Um, they're six thirty seconds by one and a quarter. So, if you want to get more screws, 
that's all you got to do is just go down to Lowe's and try to find them. I had trouble finding them there, but you may be able to find them. With this build today, we're going to actually use Arctic Silver 5, and we're just going to use the P method. We're not going to sit here and tell you guys how to use all this, because <laughs> we're not getting into that debate. So we're just going to use a P, and it kind of shot right out there. There we go. Now we're going to pull these cables out of the way. We're going to drop the CPU cooler right down. Now, once you've got the holes lined up or the screws lined up with the bolts that go through the case, just tighten it down. All right. Now we've done that. We've got we got the radiator completely mounted up. Hose tubes are ran. Only thing really left to do is connect the fan. and connect the water block pump reservoir all in one unit to your CPU fan head. Alright, then all you really got to do is move your cables out of the way, clean it up a little. Now you've installed your cooler 620, your H55, your Thermaltake Big Water, your Cooler Master uh, Sidon. They all install this pretty much this exact same way. And the last trick is when you set your computer up and you turn it on for the first time and you hear a gargling grinding sound, don't panic. Simply take your case and tilt it to the left and right. What that sound you're hearing is water bubbles that are trapped in and around the pump. Now, if you can mount your tubes at the top on the back, it'll help eliminate that even faster and keep it from happening. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to see more. We're going to keep doing these things because this is what we enjoy doing. And we appreciate the feedback and the comments. Uh, thank you guys. Have a nice day.